Hi everyone, it's Janet Wicklin with RemarkablyCreated.com. In today's One Take Wonder video, I want to take a moment to introduce you to Stampin' Blends. Today, November 1st, marks the debut of Stampin' Blends, Stampin' Up's new alcohol markers to the public. As demonstrators, we've been playing with these and getting to know them and um, learning all of the features and benefits of them, and I want to share those with you. So in today's video, I will be introducing you to the to the blends. I will be talking to you about my customer specials as well as the best way to get your hands on these, the most cost effective way that there is. So there are 12 sets. The sets are actually sold individually so that you can get just a dark marker or just a light marker. You can purchase them in ways that fit your budget, but currently there are 12 sets. And then there are three what we call specialty markers. You have ivory, you have bronze, and you have your color lifter. For your 12 sets, you have light and dark crumb cake, light and dark smoky slate, light and dark daffodil delight, light and dark calypso coral, light and dark um, pumpkin pie, light and dark real red, light and dark pink pirouette, light and dark rich razzleberry, Light and Dark Night of Navy, Light and Dark Pool Party, Light and Dark Bermuda Bay, Light and Dark Old Olive. And you will notice that I use Stamp It Up names for all of these colors because that's one of the greatest benefits of these alcohol markers is that they are a Stamp It Up product in exclusive Stamp It Up colors, which means that they're going to coordinate with Stamp It Up's inks and markers and papers and ribbons and embellishments in our main line. So absolutely amazing. Stampin' Up! has done extensive testing with these alcohol markers to ensure their, um, their lifetime, um, how long they'll last, as well as evaporation. So let's talk about some of the actual just um, benefits, some of the features. We're going to go ahead and we're going to color with them and all of that fun stuff. So let me go ahead and bring in a piece of grid paper. So, one of the first things with the markers is that they are dual tip. You have a brush tip and you have a fine tip nib on the other end. Um, there is pictures indicating which is on which end and then there's also a thin line and a fat line. The caps are airtight and they are press and lock. You're going to find that you need to pull a little bit to get them off and the reason being is you don't want to have any air seeping in and evaporating that alcohol ink. So you're going to want to also make sure when you put it on, let's see if you can hear that. You're listening for that click, okay? And so you just want to make sure that you're pushing it on firmly and you're hearing that click. Again, we have the light and dark. You have the brush tip, which is going to allow you to do your really, you know, big full areas. And you're going to have, again, that brush nip for some fine work. One of the other features of these markers, besides the fact that they're exclusive, you've got the two tips, is that they're square. And that's nice because they're not going to roll off your surface when you're working with them. I love that. They're also very lightweight. They feel um, very comfortable in your hand. They're great to work with. I like um, how they feel and how you hold on to them when you're working with them. So let's look at some of the additional products that are available this month when the Stampin' Blends releases. Stampin' Up! has designed a new exclusive stamp set, Color Me Happy. This one will be available for you to purchase beginning today as well, and it is available individually, or there is a coordinated project kit that is available, again, individually, or um, you can purchase that in a bundle. You're going to be able to make these really fun cards that have been designed to work with this stamp set, and of course, the stamp set has been designed to work with the Stampin' Blends. In addition with the Stampin' Blends, Stampin' Up! recommends the Memento Ink Pad. This is in our current catalog, and of course, anytime you purchase an ink pad, I always recommend that you pick up the refill to go with it right away. There's nothing worse than having your pad um, need re-inked at 2 a.m. in the morning and then having to wait for a re-inker to arrive. So I always order a re-inker every time I order a new ink pad. So this is going to be your pad of choice when coloring with the markers. As I mentioned, the markers are available individually. They are available in coordinated sets, so you can purchase individual or sets, or you can purchase the entire line. All, um, 
all 12 um, double sets of markers will be available to you. One of the best ways to get your hands on the markers is as a demonstrator with a demonstrator starter kit. For um, just $99, you can purchase the entire set and the color lifter marker. You'll um, purchase those for $99, which is a savings over the $125, and you'll enjoy free shipping on that. There's absolutely no obligation with our starter kit, but the starter kit does give you access to purchase additional um, markers like the ivory and the bronze, the stamp sets, and of course any other Stampin' Up! supplies um, and products and things like that that you're interested in at 20% off. So that's the best deal going out there, and you're going to want to visit me at RemarkablyCreated.com to take advantage of that deal. In addition, I have special offers for my customers this month where they will have... Um, um, the choice of Seasons of Whimsy or Merry Patterns, in addition to also um, receiving the three specialty markers with purchases. So for the details of those specials, you're going to want to make sure that you're on my mailing list. All of those details were sent to my customers this morning in a newsletter, and you can join my newsletter at RemarkablyCreated.com. So let's start playing. Oh, wait a minute. One more fun thing. Let me just give you a fun little tip for storing your markers. It is recommended that you store them flat like this. And so one of the ways that I store mine is with these um, markers um, holders here. These are called um, Crafter's Companion and you can find them on Amazon and in my blog post I will have a link for them. They have them in black, blue, they have them in acrylic and they also have a really cool carrying case for those of you who like to take your your markers to crops or when you get together to craft with others or away on crafting weekends and things like that. So um, a great storage. It actually sits like this. I just had it turned so that you could see the opening. So the reality is it sits like this and it's stair stepped back so that works great okay so now let's start looking at some tips for working with these again if you visit remarkablycreated.com you're going to find a pdf to download of all of the tips that i've mentioned and then some and for those of you that are my team members or demonstrators in my training center make sure that you check those respective facebook groups for a version of that pdf that you can add your contact information on and to use with your own customers okay so you want to prepare your work surface um, a really good wet marker will go ahead and um, bleed through your cardstock so you want to make sure that you have paper to work on I love our 11 by 17 grid paper and we'll use it until it is completely covered with images and um, marked marks up and all that kind of stuff and it's a nice big um, piece that is you know bigger than an eight and a half by 11 cardstock so I love our 11 by 17 grid paper for that of course you're going to want memento ink you're going to want your markers and then you're going to want some stamped images and let me just show you again a couple of my favorite that I've been playing with so the two um, Mary patterns was a host special that just ended the only way to get this stamp now um, at least through me is as an incentive this month with purchase the seasons of whimsy is a host set in the holiday catalog and I don't think it's getting enough attention it's got a great stamp um, three great stamps for um, coloring of course you can do some fun stuff with the blend abilities around the sparklers and then a really fun stamped image for the upcoming Valentine's season another fun stamp set is the garden girl I like working with her to practice my skin tones so I like working with that one stamp it up also has this really fun hello color which is designed just for coloring I love the flowers in the You've Got This stamp set. Again, lots of blending possibilities, so I've been playing with this one. Another one that I really enjoy is the Remarkable You stamp set. It's got some what I call natural shading lines. So um, I'm not comfortable necessarily with, you know, is the light coming from the right or the left or exactly where all the, the shading should be. Um, um, I love feeling like an artist with the blend abilities, or blends, excuse me, boy, it's invoking an old product, but with the blends, but um, it's still not necessarily my forte. The blends make me look like an artist, and stamps with natural shading really adds to that. Another one that I've been having lots of fun coloring with is Chirpy Cheek. 
cheery chirps. And this is available in the holiday catalog. So lots of fun coloring these sweet little birds. Another one that I've been enjoying coloring is the birthday blooms. And again, it's got what I call those natural shading lines. So it kind of helps me. Oh, I should put a little extra emphasis here in these places. So I love stamps like that. Another fun one, again, with some of those natural shadings is Best Birds, and I am partial to birds. Another one that I've been playing with is um, Count My Blessings. This is in the holiday catalog. This one here is another fun one that I've been using to practice the skin tones on Christmas in the making. I love the retro holiday gals. This is one here that um, Stampin' Up! has featured in quite a few of their samples, and it caused me to get it out and to really start playing with it. And again, it's got some beautiful lines to help you add that shading and to work with that. And then one last one that I've been playing with, and these are just a few of my favorites. Of course, you're going to want to look for stamps that have you know space for you to color and shade on, and Floral Sentiments is another one of those. So... Whisper White cardstock works, but you can also use our thick Whisper White. I have found that you can also color really nicely on glossy. It does dry a little quicker, but it gives you a fun chalkboard um, chalk effect. Um, very vanilla, um, acetate, um, window sheets, vellum, all kinds of things um, will work. And this week, throughout the week, in addition to the introductory video, every day I will be presenting a different video for you featuring the Stampin' Blends with different techniques and, and things like that. So my number one recommendation, of course, after purchasing the beautiful blends and getting them home and finding a favorite stamp to work with is just to stamp tons and tons of images. And that's exactly what I did. Cardstock is just a few pennies a sheet. And I would rather, you know, just go ahead and practice like this than stamp an image, start coloring it, have a card all planned, and then realize it all didn't come together. So for me, learning to use the blends and getting comfortable with them involved just stamping tons, again, and tons of images and just starting to literally play with those different images and working with them. So let's start first with this flower. And I'm going to lower the camera just a little bit. If you hang on just a second, we're going to lower it and get in closer for you. There you go. So that you can see this um, a little bit better. So again, I've just been playing here. I've got some little shading at the tip and where the lines are. Here we just did a lighter, I mean, move that in better. Sorry about that. Here we did a lighter center and then we colored the outside. When working with the markers you can go light to dark or you can go dark to light. Um, each one's going to give you a slightly different effect and you're going to want to again experiment for what works best for you. So let's work with the light and the dark oops, Calypso Coral. And in this case I'm going to start with the dark first. And it is an alcohol marker, so that means that um, it will start to evaporate and dry. And so what I found for the best blending for myself, personally, is to work in small areas and to go ahead and blend those in. I love that you don't have any of the harsh lines with blends. You don't have that, so I can just... And I started first with the dark Calypso Coral, and now I'm going to go over it with the light. I can come back in here now if I want, and I can add some color in other places that I might want a little bit of extra. And then I can come back, and I can smooth out that again a little bit with the blends. And you're just going to keep going over it until you've smoothed it in, and hopefully you can see those lines starting to disappear. And um, so then another option that you have is just to kind of completely lay all of your light color down. And let's just lay all of that down. And now I'm going to come in and I can just add that dark over top. And remember, every time that you add color, it's going to start to darken that up a little bit. So 
So I don't always go back over the whole thing, just the areas that I want to soften, trying to get multiple shades. And I've been coloring like crazy, and I've had no issues. I made over 50 cards using um, one set of colors, and they're still really well inked and working well. Some other tips here. Again, we've used the Memento ink. You want to make sure that the ink is good and dry so that you don't get any smearing or anything like that. In addition, because they are wet, they tend to bleed a little bit, so you want to be really careful coming right to the very edge of the black. And again, as you can see here, it's bled through and that means I've got a nice juicy wet alcohol marker. So again, light over dark, dark over light work really, really well in this instance. So let's take a look at some more samples and ideas um, that I've been coloring. Excuse the little bit of coffee staining. We had a little accident at the retreat while we were coloring. But here in this case, we used light and dark Bermuda Bay. We have light and dark daffodil and light and um, dark calypso. A fun little thing here with this bird is with the bird using the light pool party. Um, I simply chose just to come in and add a little bit of color and not completely um, color it all in and use the white as the contrast on the bird, if you can see that there. And this is real red, the navy, the pool party. You've got your olive, your crumb cake. And so that's on there. Here you can see the pretty Bermuda on the Count My Blessings. Then um, here is this beautiful floral statements. And here we've used the light and dark pumpkin, the light and dark red. Here we have um, a nice cold beer. We've got your shadings of daffodil and what you may not be able to see and what the light may not be picking up is a little bit of the Wink of Stella on that one. Here's the flower from the You Are Remarkable giving you some more color combinations. We have our light and dark pool party. Of course, they're designed to work together as sets so that you get a coordinated look, but you can also mix and match. Here we have the dark pink pirouette with the light rich razzleberry. So you're going to want to mix and match and you're going to want to play. This one we have the light and dark pink pirouette light and dark rich razzleberry and again this one has a little bit of a shine courtesy of the wink of Stella here again showing you light and dark razzleberry on the grapes but look at the pretty look we get when we do the light um, razzleberry and the dark pink so just kind of playing around and you can see again just taking sheets like that and playing and of course if the image works out and you're going oh I love it I want to use it on a project you can simply fussy cut it out and then layer it on a project here on our sweet little ballerina I was practicing some skin tones working with um, the ivory and the blush I have yet to work with the bronze as a skin tone even though that's what it was designed for couple more ideas for you just showing you some blending and how it's all working here we worked with the light and dark crumb cake and then I came back in and just spot added a little bit of the bronze and so let me just kind of show you how we made that happen what we did um, what we I sound like I've got a mouse in my pocket what I did sometimes I feel like it's a village in my head but uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, just color this in And a lot of times I like to just um, color with a swirly motion. Some of the blending's already done when, when I do that. And let's pick up a little bit of our... And I'm just randomly picking a couple of the lines to highlight. If you've ever seen um, a tree ring, it is not uniform in any way, shape, which is kind of fun because that gives you a lot of artistic license. And then again, I'm just going to come in here and blend in a little bit of that and I'm not going back over the entire thing I'm just going back over the images that I created with the dark crumb cake and now we'll pull in just a little bit of the bronze again a couple of different places just trying to get a more natural tree ring look and again, you can just, they're so soft on the paper and they're so smooth. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just go back over it again with the lighter crumb cake. Just blending in those lines so it looks 
So you can just see how much fun you can have shading and mixing and matching and working with, you know, two, three, even four colors. Another example of mixing and matching is our sweet little lion here. And what I did here is I mixed our light daffodil and our light crumb cake. I wanted um, a lion that wasn't just a total um, what I call baby yellow, so a light daffodil. Um, I wanted um, a little bit more interest to him, so we mixed and matched our colors there. Here on the tree trunk again, just playing a little bit by adding spot colors to something. So that's those images. Um, let's show you some of the skin tones here. So playing with our garden girl, here the skin tones were all done with ivory. And what we did is after we colored it with ivory, we went over it entirely with the color lifter. And the color lifter is designed to go ahead and pick up color and to lighten areas. It will also completely take out color. Um, sometimes you need to give it a little bit of a time to kind of what I call develop. And um, you can go back over that, let it dry, and then keep going back over it to pull out some of that color. You can also do an all-over lightening, as I did here. I just simply went over all of the ivory after I laid it down to start to lighten. And I played with going over it multiple times on our girl here. And we will be talking more and more about the blends and um, just how that works. In addition to being able to take out spots on the, uh, I don't know if you can see that starting to come out here like that. In addition to the color lifter being able to take color out of your image, it also helps push color back when you've gone outside the lines. Boy, I sure could have used this when I was in kindergarten, let me tell you. And so I had a little area here. You'll notice the moisture on the paper. That's because it's alcohol and it's literally wet the paper. If you're still not getting all of the color back in, let that dry and then just keep working at it and it will eventually pull all of that um, back into um, your image take it off the outside edge so wonderful feature with your color lifter so that's working with it there here I want to show you something fun we've played with it on crumb cake and we've got some really realistic looking shadowing going on on the leaves playing with that this is let me see if I can find a fun piece to put this against here you can see the bird so just a totally different look, but we were still able to achieve the shadowing by playing with it on crumb cake. This is our glossy paper, and let me just show you that it does indeed work on our glossy papers. You just got to work a little bit quicker, and let's grab... So you are going to be able to get a really pretty nice effect on the glossy papers. And I like it because, again, it's actually just it's a nice effect. It's different and um, gives you some more options working with the glossy. Because they are alcohol markers, you've got to be you've got the ability to use them on lots of surfaces, your acetates, your ceramics, your plastics, all kinds of fun stuff that you're able to do with them. Let's see if I can find a couple more fun images for you just to give you a couple more ideas and to get you excited about them. Here we've got our sweet little pig. One of the things that I um trying to learn and work on is shadowing with the smoky slate or the crumb cake and so trying to add that little bit of color to give it a little shadow so that's my work in progress for myself in addition to working with um stamped images stampin up has this beautiful paper called just add color it is available in the annual catalog and there are six images on this 12 by 12 and it's heavier weight cardstock that are perfect for coloring and designed just for coloring and the blends are perfect for these so you've got your watercolor um watercolor you've got your water cans and then you've got your fun um little succulents and teapots and teacups so this is great and of course you're able to either freehand cut um, some of the images out cut sections out to mount on cards and of course um, mount them just right into a frame for pretty artwork or use them for scrapbooking another image is the feathers 
lots of fun possibilities coloring the feathers here um, are this whole sheet is just lots and lots of Victorian row homes and you can see where I've already started to color and to play with that another image is the swirling um, leaves and beautiful beautiful artwork here and again lots of possibilities for coloring and a lot of those natural shading lines so again helping you and then another image is our under the sea image and I wanted to show that to you and this is one that I've already started coloring and working with and playing with the different colors here for the seagrass again just showing you it mixing and matching colors we've got the light olive and we actually have the dark daffodil mixing in there to kind of give a different color combination to the seagrass that's on there so again mixing and matching and playing with the colors that are there another mixing and matching that may hopefully we'll see if the camera will focus for you here we have light crumb cake and we have the pink pirouette to kind of soften that seashell and give another color combination and then on the little fish here, like I did on the bird, we just did the belly and we left the top part of the fish white. So using the actual background color of the cardstock to give another layer of color to your projects. One other thing that I want to show you is that our markers also work on non-Stampin' Up! product. I want to give a little shout out to my friend Anita Haynes. Anita Haynes is a fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And this is her beautiful new um, Bible journaling book that is available on Amazon and it does have these amazing um, vellum templates for you to use in journaling in your Bible as well as um, just beautiful images that you're able to color and it's a semi glossy paper and here I went ahead and just added some color to the letters And then I'm going to go ahead and I can come back in and make the, the letters look a different color. And I'm showing you this because coloring is so, so popular. And there are so many coloring books out there on the marketplace that I am sure that you know at least two or three people who love to color. And the Stampin' Blends would be an amazing Christmas present for them. You just want to um, talk to them about how it might bleed through, depending on the paper. And if there's a potential of it bleeding through, all they want to do is just layer another piece of paper up under the page that they're coloring. But these are going to be an amazing gift for anybody on your Christmas list who love to color um, and working with coloring books that are out there on the market. So you're going to want to, oh, and then one last one, I'm sorry about this, is coloring with vellum. It gives you a beautiful stained glass look. In this case, this is pre-printed vellum, and we were able to just color in. With Stampin' Up! Vellum, if you're going to want to stamp with it, then um, you have a couple of choices, of course, Memento ink, and letting it dry really good and coloring. If you want to emboss the image and then color from behind for a real stained glass look, you can do that. You want to be careful if you're working with an embossed image or any kind of a rough surface. Um, make sure that you're not running over the edge of that with your um, different nibs because you want to protect them and not rough them up by rubbing them over. But you can definitely um, work with those as well. Again, just being extra cautious with them. But a really pretty look here on this printed vellums. If you are going to be using the Stampin' Blends in your Bible journaling, you're going to want to make sure that you layer a couple layers of what's called gesso, G-E-S-S-O, -S -S over that page um, before you start coloring on it because, of course, as alcohol blend uh, markers, you see that they do bleed and you don't want to be bleeding through the pages of your Bible. So lots and lots of possibilities with the Stampin' Blends. Remember that you're going to want to come visit me at RemarkablyCreated.com for your tip sheet with more tips tips than what I've mentioned. You're going to want to check back for the next couple of days here as we feature um, finished projects. We're going to do some fun things with ceramics and acetate and um, working a little bit more with the color lifter and just some other fun things here. So keep coming back. Remember that the best deal is to um, purchase $125 of the blends, which could be the whole set and the color lifter for just $99 and enjoy free shipping on that. And you can find out details about that. And of course, join my mailing list because you're going to want to know about my customer specials for the month around the Stampin' Blend. So come see me at RemarkablyCreated.com. That's where all the images, good news, and links are for you. Thanks, guys.